Hey guys, welcome back. I am catching up. This is the Onward to Marvel series. Now, if you noticed in the Onward Easter egg video, there were quite a number of Easter eggs hinting to Marvel and the possibility that Onward is really part of the timeline of of marvel right like there's a link there's also links in big hero 6 as well as in incredibles and incredibles 2 kind of interesting right we're gonna have to talk more about that at a different time but this one is specifically linking onward to the marvel story now according to the theory i'm just gonna let you know i did read through it i do feel a little bit confused on where they're going with this so i'm going to try to make this kind of as clear as possible reading this theory out so just letting you guys know according to this user i don't think i have a name so if this is you i do give credits where credit is due yeah i didn't find a name attached to this um the story of star lord trying to get the avengers so the, the theory begins that the story of star lord um is trying to get all the rest of the avengers to play the dungeons and dragons now, here's the thing about Star-Lord. Star-Lord um, is played by Chris Pratt, who also plays, I believe his name is Bailey in the movie. Um, uh, <laughs> he plays the big brother, right? Um, Barley, sorry, Barley. He plays Barley Lightfoot. Now, this is important to note because a lot of what barley does is very much like the way that um star lord or uh peter quill is in the marvel films so not only is it the actor as the easter egg but it's the way that barley is he's very much a He's very much similar, very much similar taste. It has, um, if you notice on Barley's vest that he constantly wears, there's a lot of Easter eggs to Marvel. So also in the van of Guinevere as well. So quite some interesting things. So anyway, the theory goes that in, in the Marvel part, Peter Quill is trying to get the Avengers to play Dungeons and Dragons, which is what Barley is playing in Onward, right? Um, so there's only a small band of would-be heroes brave enough to take up the call of adventure, but Star-Lord is undaunted. His enthusiasm abounds. He will finish the quest or die in attempt of victory. Uh, in, in in the attempt victory however he is assured or so he claims so i want to just play this little clip clip from guardians of the galaxy i honestly love this clip um this is what hooked me on this movie i was kind of hesitant with guardians of the galaxy when i first watched it and then i was like oh heck yes love this film the easter eggs video though if you guys are wondering is going to be coming up for guardians of the galaxy will be released uh march 5th will be the first one and march 6th will be guardians of the galaxy 2 if you're interested in when those um, easter egg videos are coming so just so you know it is coming up very soon um so yeah that is that is something that is happening so let's look at the clip and then we're going to read on.
So, sure, most of the Avengers do ignore him, but Peter Parker feels bad for Quill. Of course, Spider Man. Spider Man's too nice. I love Spider Man, but he's so nice sometimes. I love Tom Holland. Uh, and honestly, no debate, Tom Holland is the best Spider Man. Sorry, but not sorry. Um, you can tell me who your favorite Spider Man is below. No hate towards that. We're all right. <laughs> Uh, just my opinion. I love Tom Holland for the role. Anyway, um, Endwell actually wants to play, maybe, but he's not too sure. Yeah, I feel like Peter Parker's a, a people pleaser. Anyway, Gamora is the only one to support, uh, Peter Quill, because that's her boyfriend, but she's not really sure of this whole thing either. And Nebula just wants to pinch whatever is closest. Yeah, his group of guardians is quite something else. Uh, let's just take a quick look at these group of people. It's an odd bunch, isn't it? Anyway, Thor showed up for a moment, but mostly Star-Lord and Spider-Man played um, the character for him since he had mu much more mightier things to do. Of course, Thor. Pressing the need to quench his thirst for battle against w worthier foes. Yeah, that's very much Thor. Um, anyway, so Star-Lord spends the whole adventure trying to convince Spider-Man to follow the quest um, his way while Peter Parker just wants to get to the end to find the loot and the game that he can, so that he can say he's played Dungeons and Dragons. Um, he's he that he's heard so much about. At the start, he doesn't seem to really be enjoying it all that much, especially once he discovers that one of the other Avengers are interested in playing. He had hoped it'd be sort of a group bonding experience or a team building experience or something of that sort, but also Tony Stark might have hinted that it was mandatory. And as we know that Tony took Peter Parker under his wing at one point, um, so there's that. That's really important to note. And I feel like Tony... <sighs> Here's the thing. I feel like uh, for some, Tony was the lead in um, the Avengers. He was like the leader. But then like at some point, it was also Captain America. And then, of course, there's a civil war between the two. So it's like, hey, both of the dads. I'm going to call them both the dads. Not in that manner. Don't, don't take it that way. But like they're the dads of the group. And dads were fighting. <laughs> and people had a side. And it sucked. Um, but I... You know, at some point, they obviously, after Civil War, they ended up fixing the situation. Everyone's back together. They ended up fi fighting for good causes and all that. Um, 
but yeah i i mean peter parker definitely people pleases especially to tony stark especially anyway this was a shorter theory what do you guys think um it's very much you know kind of like for me my explanation of this theory of what i've read is that the way that this those scenes go is kind of like a mirror of you know the lightfoot brothers barley and uh now i can't think of the other guy's name hold on a second and ian um in onward are playing the game in real life whereas the avengers are playing it on the i want to say the board game but you know the board game although we do see clips of the board game in um onward but also like i said there's a lot of easter eggs to marvel in onward so who knows who knows maybe i mean i have some other theories that like they say long before um you know when magic was a thing and before modern times there's a lot of references to lord of the rings and onward so maybe there was something of that sort where the magical creatures ended up more becoming supers or mutants you can take that how you want whether it's incredibles or x-men just saying just saying but you guys get the point so what are your thoughts do you think this is a good theory or not i don't know i'm kind of feeling iffy about it but it is what it is and i will see you guys later